Welcome to the Hamilton Technology Complex located in Hamilton, New Jersey. The 126,000 square foot facility has a 225 seat capacity amphitheater style auditorium and houses multiple state and federal agencies including the New Jersey State Police, the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness, the FBI Regional Computer Forensic Laboratory, the New Jersey Office of Information Technology, and attorneys with the New Jersey Office of the Attorney General. This video tour highlights a few of the laboratories and units that fall within the Forensic and Technical Services section of the New Jersey State Police Investigations Branch. The four regional crime laboratories and the DNA laboratory of the New Jersey State Police Office of Forensic Sciences are internationally accredited. The Office of Forensic Sciences Administration, Central Regional Laboratory, DNA Laboratory, Breath Testing Unit, Budget and Procurement Unit, Forensic Anthropology Unit, Laboratory Information Management System Unit, and the Quality Assurance Unit are all housed at this facility. Let's begin the tour at the Evidence Receiving Unit of the Central Regional Laboratory. The Evidence Receiving Unit is responsible for the daily intake of evidence at each of the regional laboratories. Evidence handlers for the Central Regional Laboratory receive evidence for the serology, DNA, trace, drug, and toxicology units. When evidence is submitted to the laboratories, the evidence handlers will utilize the Laboratory Information Management System, or LIMS, to enter or confirm the information specific to the evidence. Each case submitted for analysis receives a unique case number, and the evidence is marked with an associated barcode label. After all evidence has been labeled and the paperwork has been signed, the evidence is placed in a secured storage location, or vault, until it is retrieved for analysis. Once analyses are completed, the evidence is returned to the vault until it's returned to the submitting agency. In addition to the intake of evidence, the evidence receiving units also help the legal community and the submitting agencies with inquiries about their cases as well as with uh, legal and court matters. The drug unit analyzes more than 10,000 cases each year for the presence of controlled dangerous substances. Cases submitted to the drug unit include possession, distribution, overdoses, and death investigations associated with suspected overdoses. Most of the evidence received from these cases come in the form of pills, powders, vegetation, or liquids. Analysts inventory the items submitted, weigh the samples, and conduct presumptive tests to guide them in determining what may be present in the sample. Armed with this knowledge, the analyst will then extract the sample and run a confirmatory test using state-of-the-art instrumentation to identify the components of any controlled dangerous substances present. This information, along with the weight of the sample, provides agencies with the information needed to determine the degree of charge, first, second, third, fourth, or disorderly persons. The toxicology unit analyzes blood and urine for the presence of impairing compounds in driving under the influence investigation. DUIs and DWIs. Drug facilitated crimes, which involve incapacitating someone with a drug for the purpose of committing a crime, are only analyzed at the Central Regional Laboratory. The toxicology unit analyzes over 2,500 cases per year, with most of this caseload being driving under the influence or DUI cases. Blood samples are first analyzed for blood alcohol content. And depending on these results, samples may be further analyzed for the presence of other drugs. Specimens are extracted, screened for possible drugs, then confirmed using sophisticated instrumentation. The analysis of drug facilitated crimes is more involved and requires the analysis of both blood and urine, additional extractions, and the use of more specialized instrumental techniques. The trace in the trace evidence unit refers to the size of the physical evidence analyzed, which is often very small or microscopic and hard to observe. This unit analyzes over 150 cases per year, with much of the caseload involving the examination of impressions, paint evidence, low explosives, and fire debris. 
paint and impression examinations are performed as comparisons or may use one of several databases for the development of investigative leads. The trace evidence unit also recovers samples from hairs, tape, and envelopes and submits them for DNA analysis. Additional types of examinations performed by the trace evidence unit include glass, gunshot residue, hair identification, on or off status of light bulbs, pressure sensitive tapes, physical fits, and plastic bag analysis. The forensic serology unit is responsible for identifying and isolating biological material on physical evidence. Analysts document the physical evidence, screen the evidence for the presence of biological material, and collect biological samples to be sent to the DNA laboratory for further analysis. The Forensic Serology Unit receives over 2,500 cases per year, most of which are sexual assaults, burglaries, homicides, assaults, and robberies. Items submitted are varied and include articles of clothing, weapons, bottles or cans, cigarette butts, masks, sexual assault kits, as well as any item that might contain biological material with potential DNA. The Forensic Serology Unit works in conjunction with the Trace Evidence Unit, the DNA Laboratory, and the Crime Scene Investigation Unit to process evidence to further cold case investigations and to assist at crime scenes. The DNA Laboratory, composed of the Caseworking, CODIS, and DNA Databasing Units, analyzes crime scene samples submitted by analysts specializing in serology, trace evidence, ballistics, and anthropology. The state-of-the-art laboratory receives approximately 2,500 cases every year, ranging in complexity and severity. Some cases are rather straightforward, such as the analysis of the blood spilled while breaking through a broken window while others may become much more complicated to interpret, such as a homicide with multiple victims or suspects. Samples go through a four-step procedure to generate DNA profiles. Except for identical twins, everyone in the world is expected to have their own unique DNA profile, making this information extremely valuable when linking victims and suspects to crime scene samples. The first step of the laboratory process is called extraction where any cells present in the sample are broken apart and the DNA inside is freed. Liquid handling robotics assist in processing dozens of samples within a few hours, which significantly limits the amount of hands-on time required of the analyst. The second step is quantification, where the laboratory determines how much, if any, DNA is present in the sample. A minimum amount of DNA is required to be detected at this stage to proceed. When there is enough suitable DNA to move forward, the DNA laboratory performs the third step, amplification, where millions of copies of specific areas of DNA are targeted and multiplied to generate a DNA profile. Lastly, during the fourth step, detection, those results can be visualized on a computer in a chart called an electropharogram. The DNA profile seen here might not look like it contains much information, but when it is compared to the known DNA profiles of the people potentially involved in crime, it can be invaluable in helping to put the pieces together. The combination of numbers seen can be individualized to a person. Everyone has a DNA profile, half of which was passed down from their biological mother and half that was passed down from their biological father. When a perpetrator leaves biological material, such as blood, semen, saliva, or skin cells behind at a crime scene, the caseworking unit of the DNA laboratory plays an essential role in identifying its source. The DNA laboratory also houses the CODIS and the DNA databasing units. CODIS stands for the Combined DNA Index System, and it links serial, unsolved cases with repeat offenders. DNA profiles developed from crime scene samples are entered into the CODIS database to be searched against other crime scene samples and known DNA profiles from people convicted of and arrested for eligible crimes. When a match or hit occurs, the CODIS unit assesses the hit and issues a notification to the appropriate law enforcement agencies. Over 1,000 CODIS hits are generated every year 
helping to provide investigative leads that can help identify perpetrators and solve serial crimes. The DNA Database and DNA Data Bank of 1994 established the New Jersey DNA Data Bank and the collection of blood samples from persons convicted of certain violent sexual crimes. The caseworking and CODIS units were also created in 1994 to perform DNA analysis on crime scene evidence and to upload DNA profiles to CODIS. In 2003, the DNA Database and Data Bank Act was updated to include the collection of saliva samples from persons convicted of all first through fourth degree felonies. This update resulted in a rapid expansion of the data bank and helped lead to the creation of the DNA Database Unit in 2006. The DNA Database Unit analyzes all database saliva samples and uploads the profiles into the state and national DNA databases. Law enforcement agencies throughout the state of New Jersey collect approximately 15,000 database samples per year. The laboratory employs state-of-the-art technology to assist in the efficient and expeditious processing of the many hundreds of samples it receives each week. The ballistics unit is responsible for the examination and analysis of approximately 3,500 firearms and firearm-related evidence cases submitted by local, state, and federal agencies yearly. This unit examines firearms to determine operability status of submitted weapons, as well as comparing projectiles, cartridge cases, and other fire components recovered at crime scenes to determine if they were fired from the same firearm. Additionally, the unit performs serial number restorations and gunshot residue muzzle to target distance determinations. The ballistics unit provides expert testimony in municipal, county, state, and federal courts and provides information support, training, and lectures to state police schools, outside police agencies, and other special groups. In 2015, the unit implemented the Crime Gun Protocol. This nationally recognized protocol created the capability for all evidence to go through forensic assessment and entry into the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network, or NIBIN, within two business days. After entry, the images are correlated and compared to evidence from other jurisdictions to include the ability to compare evidence from across the country. This investigative tool gives the unit the capability to share information to law enforcement nationwide and approximately 800 NIBIN leads are generated annually. The objective of the Crime Gun Protocol is to provide actionable investigative leads in a timely manner while supporting the aggressive enforcement and prosecution of gun crimes in New Jersey. The Forensic Anthropology Unit is responsible for the examination and analysis of human skeletal remains found in New Jersey. This analysis involves, but is not limited to, the determination and estimation of age, biological sex, population affinity, stature, pathologies, and traumas that may have contributed to the cause of death, with the end goal being to assist in establishing the positive identification of the remains. The Forensic Anthropology Unit processes approximately 30 cases each year, some with the assistance of national databases, such as the National Crime Information Center, NCIC, and the National Missing and Unidentified Person System, NAMIS. The Forensic Anthropology Unit aids local, state, and federal agencies. The unit will assist in the search for and the controlled excavation and recovery of buried, hidden, or scattered remains or other evidence. Assistance is available in the preparation of composite drawings of the face based upon the analysis of the skull. The unit will also coordinate the submission of unidentified human remains for DNA analysis and subsequent entry into CODIS. Assist with the retrieval of unidentified remains for an investigative genetic genealogy analysis and provide human versus non-human consults as well as train agencies throughout New Jersey in general forensic anthropology and excavation procedures. The Forensic Anthropology Unit has the capacity for long-term curation and the retrieval of unidentified human remains. The goal of the Forensic Anthropology Unit is to provide closure for families and to give every unidentified individual their name back. 
And that concludes our tour today at the New Jersey State Police Forensic and Technical Services section. We really hope you enjoyed getting an insight into some of the things we do here in Hamilton and appreciate you spending the time with us today.